Hey guys, so for those of you that didn't see, I am taking over Ashley's fire Zoom tonight. So surprise, if you're on my team, you saw, saw a cute graphic of Ashley, well, you're getting me instead. So real sorry about that. Um, and if I can be just totally honest with everyone on here, and I feel like this is kind of how Ashley starts every single one of her fire Zooms. Um, but if I could be totally honest, there are a lot of things that I would like to be doing right now that include a bubble bath or a nap or like literally Netflix and chilling, like totally chilling, <laughs> like just totally checking out. Um, and so I wanted to be very honest and say like when she asked me to do this Zoom last night, you don't, you don't say no to Ashley. I mean, she would have understood, but I wasn't going to say no. It's an honor to host her fire Zoom. But then if you guys haven't seen, like Jackson has hand, foot and mouth disease and I've got a baby that's taking, you know, 30 minute naps and both children are waking up in the night. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> and so I wanted to be very real with you guys. Cause for the first half of today, I was like messaging Tiffany, like, I don't know what to talk about. Like, I don't feel like I have a brain. I was just feeling, you know, unmotivated. Um, and so for the first half of the day, I just had like, not a negative attitude, but just that I don't, I don't know how I can pour anything into anyone right now, because I feel like I'm so depleted. But then I had a, um, a switch flip. And honestly, what I'm doing tonight is the thing that most people need to do that keeps them from where they want to be. And it's showing up despite feeling like it, right? There's so many times that people are feeling unmotivated or they're feeling discouraged or they're not feeling it or they're tired or whatever. And we use those as excuses to not show up and do the things that we said we were going to do. And I, it was never a question of whether I was going to show up. I do the things that I say I'm going to do despite how I'm going to feel it. And so I'm going to kind of talk to you guys tonight about what it looks like to do things when you are not feeling it, to do things when you're not feeling motivated to feel things, when you're to do things, when you're not excited, when you don't feel that fire in your belly, how you continue to show up because, you know, I'm a red personality type three, like, to be honest, I want to say, just do it anyways, right? Like just, just show up. You just, you said you want to do that. So just do it. But I also know that there's a lot of people that work off emotion and there's a lot of people that do have crazy lives and every single day it's a battle to show up for their business. I even had a new distributor the other day that was like, I'm working two jobs. And by the time I get home, I'm just tired. Like, how do you choose to continue showing up for your business when you have a schedule like that? So I'm just going to talk through, um, some tangible things that you guys can, can be doing or can put into place or can share with someone on your team. Because to be honest, there's going to be a season. If you're not there right now, there's going to be a season of your business where you just have to show up even though you're not feeling it. So um, I have notes so that I won't get too far over the place. Um, but yes, yeah, so contrary to popular belief, you can not want to do something and you can still do it anyways, okay? So that's what self-discipline is. And that's exactly why people struggle in this industry. It's not because you're lacking skills or resources or someone's more talented, talented than you. Um, you know, there's that quote, you guys have probably seen it. And I think it's actually about commitment, but you could sub discipline for it. Discipline is doing what you said you would long after the mood you set it in has left you. And so I always like think back to conference for those of you that were in conference or have even been to, um, an online virtual conference that we've had, but specifically like an in-person conference. And you've got that like fire and you're around all these people that just get it and you're going to fight with them. Right. And you have all these dreams and you're like, loud about it, shouting it off from the, from the rooftops. And, but discipline you guys is three months down the road, still putting in the actions to get to the goal that you said that you wanted three months before. So again, it's doing the things long after that feeling in you has left. Um, okay. So here's a couple of things that I want to encourage you guys to do. And I was telling Tyler before, before the zoom, I'm like, this is perfect. Cause these are literally things I had to do today to get my to-do list done, even though it was not what I wanted to do, right? So um, the first thing was set a timer and do the hardest, most income producing thing on your to-do list that day, because in reality, you can do anything for 10 minutes. Even for those of you that hate running or exercising, you can do anything for 10 minutes, okay? And so I set a timer for 10 minutes I, and it's so silly, but you guys, I didn't want to send out messages about host to post. Like I just, I didn't, you guys, you can drop one in the chat. If you ever like 
it's so easy, but I just didn't want to do it. So I just set a timer. I was like, I can do anything for 10 minutes. That's what I'm doing because that was the thing on my to-do list that I was like, if I get that done, I will feel more productive. I'll feel less anxious over my business. I'll have people in my inbox over the next couple of hours. And I will feel so much better by doing that thing. Because there's a lot of you guys that I think if you look at your to-do list, you knock off all the really easy things and then you still feel anxious and you wonder why. You feel like you've been working all day, but it's because you sent out happy birthday messages and commented on a few posts and checked in with a few people on your team, but you didn't do something that was actively growing your business. So I set a timer and I guarantee you guys, if you will choose to do the hardest thing on your to-do list and you give yourself just a 10 minute window. The reason that the timer was important, you guys, I felt like it was like, if I can just hustle, then I can, I can take a breath and I can go do something else. I can do laundry or take a nap if both kids are sleeping. Like it was the permission to like work hard for a small spurt of time. And it doesn't always have to be 10 minutes, obviously, but set a timer, like do a power hour. That's why we do power hours. Cause you can get so much done when you are laser focused. So set a timer, do the hard thing first so that you can feel less anxious about your business for the rest of the day. I know that they're are different like theories on like how you should tackle your to-do list. Um, so for me personally, I don't do the hardest thing very first in the day. I know that some people do that. Um, but I typically start with a couple of easy things that I can knock out. Boom, 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 like get some momentum going and then knock out the hard thing, like set a timer, do the hard thing. So that way, again, you can be reactive throughout the day. Sometimes I think we put like the hard thing at the beginning of the to-do list, then we just never get to the to-do list at all. So you have to, you know, so much about this business is just figuring out what works for you and for your brain. But if you're someone that struggles with doing the most important things on your list, I would really encourage you guys to make it a priority earlier on in your day. It doesn't have to be the first thing that you do, but earlier on in your day. So that way it's not hanging over you all day long. Because what happens then bedtime comes around and we're tired and we don't want to do that thing. It'll be easier to do in the morning. It'll be easier to do the next day. And then we start the cycle over and over and over again. Okay. Um, so, uh, the other thing along with that is if you guys have read or listened to the five second rule, there's actually like a 10 minute YouTube video. If you guys just want a quick, uh, summary, but it's by Mel Robbins and she talks about doing a countdown. So I do this a lot in the mornings because I've been trying to get up super early before the kids are up and just counting five, four, three, two, one, and do the thing that you wanted to do. So if it's like your alarm's going off and you want to snooze it, five, four, three, two, one, get up. <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, send the message. Five, four, three, two, one, make the post, do the follow up, whatever it might be for you. But I highly recommend listening to the video on YouTube about the five second rule. Okay. So count down and then start a timer to do your work. The second thing is to actually know your weaknesses. So uh, this was actually, if you're on my team, you probably heard this. We had a guest speaker, Chantel, Sp Chantel Spielman, a few weeks ago. Um, and she talked about knowing what it feels like when you're motivated. And then knowing what it feels like when you're unmotivated. And so what does it look like on a day that you wake up and you just don't feel like doing anything? Why is that? Try to pinpoint some very specific things of what it feels like when you don't feel motivated. And then how is it different on the days where you wake up and feel excited? Because you're never going to wake up and feel excited every single day. So a very um, tangible example was getting ready in the morning. If you're someone that you know you feel more motivated and ready and excited when you get up and you do your hair or you put some mascara on or you have your coffee or you have your time with Jesus, like figure out what those things are on a consistent basis that you do that help you feel motivated and then figure out the things that make you feel unmotivated, like maybe not getting enough sleep or not taking good care of yourself or not having time with Jesus or not being present with your family the night before, like whatever that thing is that lingers over you, that causes you to be less motivated or less focused or less disciplined, it pinpoint those things and then make a correction. And so I know for me, like you guys can tell, I don't, I don't like get dolled up most days, but on the days where I will wake up and I'll have my coffee and I'll do my personal development. And I do get a little bit ready, even if it's just putting on a little bit of makeup and mascara, I at least feel like I can take a picture. I feel like I can be in a story. I feel like I can get on a coaching call with someone and not feel like a slob. There's all these things that if I don't do that thing, as silly as it sounds, I am less excited 
less motivated. I'm, I'm still like in yoga. Like for some of you, it might be like getting dressed and ready for me. I just, I need to look somewhat presentable to feel motivated. Um, and I also need to do my personal development. Cause it's one of those things. If I don't do it before the kids are awake, I, I give myself excuses of like, uh, they want to listen to wheels on the bus. And like, I can't listen to my book now. And then the, the day's over and I'm like, crap, I haven't done anything or listened to anything good. So again, figure out how you feel when you feel good about your business in the morning and make sure if it's, if you can't go to bed after midnight and function the next day, you need to stop going to bed after midnight, like figure out what those things look like for you, figure out those weaknesses, um, and make sure you put a plan into place to make sure you are setting yourself up for success the next day, not constantly setting yourself up to feel or not feel it or to feel unmotivated the next day. Okay, the third thing, and I think a lot of you guys have this, but if you don't, you need good friends to help hold you accountable. And actually, I was reading an article early earlier today on just like how to, how to be self-disciplined, how to feel motivated. And one of the things said, you are less likely to cheat on your goals if someone you admire is watching you. So it doesn't even necessarily have to be a peer. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sideline. Don't everyone go message Ashley and ask her to like hold you accountable. She'll kill me, but find someone that like you do not want to let down. So for some of you, that might be an upline for some of you, it might be your downline. And I know my team has a lot of yellows and I have a feeling a lot of you guys would show up for your team before you would show up for yourself. So it can be scary to tell people what you're going to do and what you're going to show up for and how you're going to act. But it's actually one of the most powerful forms of accountability you can have for yourself. Grab someone in your downline and tell them like, hey, this is what I'm doing for the next week. Like, let's do it together because you are going to be more likely to show up for them than maybe even yourself. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, the other thing is for accountability, if you are well, really, if you're on this zoom, I would consider you either a leader or an emerging leader, because in my eyes, emerging leaders show up to zoom. So good for you to be on here. Um, but I would reach out to your sponsor, your upline. And if, if this is something you're ready for or something you want to do more of, get yourself on some sort of team calendar. Make sure you're, you're hosting a power hour, either for the whole team, for my whole team, for Ashley's whole team, whoever's team you're on, or for your own downline. Because again, you're going to show up for those people. And so many people, I've, I've had a lot of people that were pregnant or had newborns that asked me how I continued to show up to work after I had a baby. I, I had to, because I, I will show up if my name is saying I'm doing something. So I signed up for things knowing I'm not going to let people down unless like something crazy happens, I will be there. So I put myself on the calendar because I wanted to hold myself accountable because how many times do you guys get on a zoom, even if you don't really want to be on it, but then you end up staying up for like two hours afterwards. Cause you're so excited to work. And so it's making that five, four, three, two, one decision to get on a Zoom or to host a Zoom or to do a power hour with your team or to do a coaching call with someone on your team, you'll show up and then you'll continue to work for an hour or two afterwards just because it feels good to show up for yourself and it feels good to show up for your team. Um, something else fun you can do for accountability, if that doesn't fire you up, being in like a group or having a sponsor or downline connecting with you, make really silly goals. <laughs> you know, there's been times where I've told Tyler, like, if I do not get 10 hosts to post up today, I will do the dishes for the rest of the week. I don't know about you guys, but we, we split some of the duties around here. So, um, but whatever that might be for you, like um, telling your best friend, like, okay, here's the deal. I know you're not in this business with me, but I need you to hold me accountable. I'm buying you lunch on Saturday if I don't sign two customers before Friday at midnight. Like I know there's hundred dollar bonuses out there and I know we can get fast starts, but sometimes it takes something so silly for us to actually hustle to make something happen. And I, I mean, I have enough discipline for me where it's like, I can't have X, Y, Z until I get my steps of success done. I can't do this until I have this and I'll stick to it. Even if it's something so silly and it costs $5. So everyone's motivated by something different, but those are just some fun little things that you guys can do to hold yourself accountable. And it doesn't have to be enrollment based. It could be just getting your host to post up or sending out X amount of follow-ups, or maybe you have a thousand friends right now. What are you going to do for yourself when you get to 2000 friends? 
It can be something so silly and simple to help you focus on showing up daily for your goals. And we can't always control the outcome, but we can control the effort. So making an effort goal, you guys, is super, super important. Um, okay. And then two other quick things, make sure your dreams are visible. I know a lot of us have dream boards. If you guys have hidden it somewhere, it's fallen behind a couch or your kids have destroyed it somewhere, make a new one. It does make a difference. Mine is right here up on my wall, loud and clear. And I can see it every single day when I'm in my office. So make sure you have your dreams up and visible, whether they're written on your mirror until you have time to make a dream board, it does not matter. Make sure you've got your big dreams up and visible. But then I also wanna encourage you guys, make sure you've got some smaller obtainable 30 to 60 day goals out in front of you too. I think sometimes we get really caught up, especially after things like conference where we set up these huge goals and then we have nothing in the in-between. So it's like, we're never proud of ourselves in between hitting that from here to that huge goal because we didn't line up anything else. So make sure you guys are setting some smaller goals that you can actually control. And then the last thing is, and Ashley kind of touched on this because it was a conversation her and I had when we were in Lubbock. But if you guys have read the Atomic Habits book, it's amazing. You guys drop a one if you've read Atomic Habits or listen to it. It's so good. It's one I really need to go back and listen to, to be honest, probably like twice a year. Um, but do the things as you think of them. So I know for me, <laughs> I can admit that a weakness is I will think of all these things I need to do all day long. And my to-do list will just be like five miles long. <laughs> and I'll just keep adding to my to-do list rather than just, instead of taking the 10 seconds to add it to my to-do list, taking the 30 seconds to actually do it. And I'm not talking about the big things, but there's things you guys, if it takes you like I would say like three minutes or less that we need to just go ahead and do those things rather than adding them to our to-do list and having that much more stress that we have something else on our to-do list and haven't knocked something else off our to-do list. So a good example is, and I want you guys to drop a three. If you do this, if there is a message in the boards app that every time you use it, you go edit it when you could just go in the boards app and just edit it. And it would save you so much time. Every time you send it, you edit it. But yet you could just go in right now and take 10 seconds to do it. And it would probably save you 10 minutes all month long. Yeah. Okay. We all, <laughs> some of you guys edit it, but most of us are guilty of that. Why? It's so silly because it would take us an extra 10 seconds, but it's going to save us so much time in the long run. So there's so many things that you guys will think of now, like, just try to keep that in the back of your brain. Like, is this something that I could make? more efficient in my business. If you're constantly thinking like, how could I be more effective in my business? How could I make this even shorter, sweeter, simpler? Because a lot of times I, it'll keep me from doing something because it's not already ready. And it's, this is so silly, you guys, because this business has never been more like spoon fed to people. Like we have literally a board of messages <laughs> in our phone. Like it's never been simple, but it's almost like it's so simple that I don't, I don't know what happens. Like, I don't know if our brain just shuts down where it's like, we need it to be easier. We need, so we need Facebook to just message it for us. Like literally everything is in our hands. We just have to press the button, but make sure you guys are making those little tiny decisions throughout your day that will make you more effective and save you a lot more time in the long run. Um, and then, okay. Let's see here. I have a few other notes. Good, it's 8.20. I was like, I'm either gonna talk for four minutes or I'm gonna talk for an hour. I'm not sure what's gonna happen tonight. I just jotted a bunch of things down that were on my brain. Um, okay, so this is gonna be a little bit more leadership related, um, but again, everyone on here is either currently a leader or a future leader. So I think it's good to hear it. I was listening to the Craig Groeschel podcast this week. If you guys don't listen to it, it's so good. It's probably one of my favorite podcasts. Um, they're all relatively short, but he has a series recently that is on his new book, which is winning the war in the mind, which I just started. And he, I don't want to like totally recap it because you guys can just listen to the podcast. So I'm just going to touch on a couple things that stuck out to me. But the one I was listening to today that says, when we try to control everything, Okay, drop a four if you would consider yourself kind of a control freak, either just in 
everyday life or in the business. Okay, yep, mm -hmm. same as these. Okay, this is gonna hurt a little bit then probably, okay? When we try to control everything, we unintentionally undervalue the people around us. And he goes through this whole thing on it of like how by us having to have control, how belittling that is for the people around us and how much power we take away from those people. And for us to say that we want to be a leader of leaders, but then we want to control everything. And then, you know, he talks about this lie that we say of like, well, it, it'll be better if I do it, or it'll be faster if I do it. And we're setting ourselves up for not what we join this business for, especially those of you that are leaders. Like we want to have duplication. We want to have freedom of time. And we're never going to have that if we're always the one in control and we're never going to raise up the kind of leaders that we want to have. And so, and he also talks about by like giving people a chance and releasing some of that control. Some of these people are going to go out and they're going to be better than you, but we're not giving them the chance to do that. So anyways, that was just a, a punch in the gut for me. I feel like I've gotten better, but it's always, always a good reminder to go through and like what things in your business or in your life in general, can you release a little bit of control over? Um, and then he goes through a lot of just mindset, like hence the title of his book, winning the war in your mind. But a couple of things that he was talking about is like in 10 years, we're each going to look in the mirror and someone's going to stare back at us. And that person is going to be shaped by the thoughts that we have today. And the life that we have and the life that we will have is just a reflection of what we think. And, um, and he goes on to talk about how modern science and the Bible agree on this. Like the thoughts that you think and that your life is going in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And how so many people aren't even aware what their strongest thoughts are. Like we suppress them and we believe them as truth, even though they're lies a lot of times that we're telling ourselves. And he says, a lie believed as truth will affect your life as if it were true. Okay, so for these lies that you guys are, are that we all are, I shouldn't say you guys, but me too. But these lies that we, lies we are continuing to think, the lies that we are continuing to believe, they're going to affect our lives as if they are true. That's how powerful our thoughts are. So when we're saying things like, we're not good enough, I couldn't be a leader like that, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, I don't have this, whatever those lies are that are going around in your head, you guys, when we continue to repeat those things, our brain begins to believe they're true. And then our life is affected as if they were true. So like, I don't know why, but I was listening to that and I was like, what an aha moment. And so he starts going through the, and he gives some really great examples. I think it's podcast episode 90, maybe um, I'll have to double check that, but I would recommend going to listen to it because I guarantee you guys will relate with at least one of the lies he lists. And then he replaces that lie with truth. And so until you guys can come up with your own truth, you can go through and listen to it and start speaking those truths. And so one of the things that he talks about, and again, it was another gut, gut punch for me, but it was like talking about how many people say there aren't enough hours in the day. And I am so guilty of being like, oh, if I just, you know, I need, I either need two of me or I need more hours in the day. And he says, instead of saying, you wish you had more hours in the day, I believe he says, I have time for the things I choose or something. I have time for the things I choose to have time for something like that. Um, and I was like, okay, like that's my new thing. I'm no longer going to say, I just need more time, more hours in the day. I have time for the things that I'm choosing to make time for. And, um, I think a lot of you guys, I think we've, we got a lot of zeros in there. So I'm assuming a lot of you guys feel that way. If we just had more time, we'd be further in our business. If we just had more time, we'd be able to have time with our family and the business and this and that, like we're constantly just feeling like we don't have enough time. And I think that's probably unanimous across the board, no matter what your life situation is, we feel like if we just had more time. And so I'm going to start phrasing it that way, because then I know I will start acting in that way. I know I will start choosing the right things that make me feel like I did have enough time in the day. Um, and I think, um, I think that was most of the stuff that I wanted to share with you guys tonight. I would most definitely go listen to that podcast. 
figure out, he does say you have to like define the lies if you're ever going to fix the lies, but figure out what that thing is that you keep telling yourself of why you can't get to the next level or why you feel stuck or why you're not signing people that are working or whatever that lie might be um, and define it so that you can start speaking truth over it. And I think that's going to correct a lot of things through these summer months for a lot of us. Um, just the thing that we're continuing to repeat over and over and over in our head. And that's going to trickle down to our teams as well. And so anyways, I hope someone on here needed to hear that tonight. I know it was a little bit all over the place. I know you guys aren't judging me, but still <laughs> I'm like, hopefully it made sense for you guys. I appreciate you jumping on and it was an honor hosting Ashley's Fire Zoom. I hope you guys have an amazing and productive night and that you go to bed feeling so proud of the effort that you put in, even if it's just from now until bedtime. All right. See you later.